Hello, my name is George C. Bradley, and today's lesson is on the relationship between multiple regression and analysis of variance using SPSS. Multiple regression analysis, in multiple regression analysis, we have considered only continuous criterion and predictor variables. In ANOVA, the independent variable is categorical, which we use a K at the K level. We use the K as the categorical or substitute that for categorical, each representing group memberships with only the dependent or the criterion variable continuous. It is possible, however, to create predicted variables that will represent the group membership in ANOVA and to use these predictor variables in multiple regression analysis. Let's take a look at our data set. Today's data set is supermarket.sav. The independent variable is shelf and it has three groups. It has shelf one, shelf two, shelf three, and the dependent or the criterion variable would be sales, the amount sold on that shelf, and it's free and it's online. Let's take a look at our data set that we have here, supermarket and SPSS. Let's first do an analysis of variance. We will go to analyze, before I start with analysis of variance, let me click out of that and let's look at the dependent variable sales. And as you can see, the independent variable shelf and the first group is one, shelf one. You can see there what corresponds to that. And you can see two and shelf two, shelf three. And it kind of repeats itself all the way down that the sales matches up with the shelf. Let's do an analysis of variance here. We'll go to compare means all the way down to one-way ANOVA. We'll reset here. We'll go sales, dependent list, shelves down here. And we have our analysis. You can see it's significant. You can see the F test. You can see the sum of squares and the mean squares. And you can see it's significant. And if you want to find out where the difference is, you would have to do a post hoc test to find the differences in the three areas in that combination. Now, let's go back to our data set. And as you can see here, we added two predicted variables. We added two predicted variables, we added x1 and x2. And although we got three groups here, that k minus 1, that k represents the groups 1, 2, 3, and minus 1 give you 2. So with your predictors, you only have two variables. But let's look at what we did here. For 1, we use our dummy coding or our binary coding. And one represents one, zero. Two represents zero, one. And three represents zero, zero, and so on. So right there with our two variables, we get two variables from k minus one, but we use our dummy coding or our binary coding here. Now let's conduct a multiple regression. We'll go down to regression and we'll go down to linear. We will reset and our dependent variable is sales and our independent variable, our two new variables, x1, x2, we'll put in, we'll hit OK. And let's take a look here. Now, the first thing I want you to take a look at is that for our NOVA, our NOVA table, and the NOVA, and the NOVA table for the regression, 
are identical. They are identical. And you can see here the variables we included. Let's go down to our summary table here. Our summary table, we have our, um, our R and R square, and we have our adjusted R. This R square is a key component here. This R square is a key component. Once again, looking at our model summary, we have our R square, which is a key component here. We have our NOVA here, which is identical again to the NOVA that we conducted early. And let's take a look at our calculator here and see the importance of this R square, the R square, and what we can get and the similarities between a NOVA and, and the actual regression. If we use the sum of, total sum of squares, and that's 1492.842 times, and we use our R square times 0.627, you can see right here we have our regression sum of squares and right here if we clear that and we say 1 minus 0.627 okay that and that's r square there equals times once again 1 4 9 2 0.842, which is our total sum of squares, that will give you the residual. Not quite the precision, but very, very, very close. Okay, let's go back to the data set. We go back to the data set here. And I slipped in and, and clicked before the unstandardized, um, this is right here, the unstandardized um, predicted values right here for this. And you can see on shelf one is predicting the sale of 13.5. And on shelf two is predicting um, 17. And, pred and on shelf three, is predicting 25.5 and if we go back here we can see we, where these numbers are coming from these numbers are coming from here the constant and when you subtract you'll get the one and when you subtract here and you have your predicted values here when those num you have this right here as a part of the equation this right here as a part of the equation that you see in the data set right here as you see in the data set right here um, with predicted predict pre one are there any questions if you have any questions please email me at George C Bradley 59 at gmail.com thank you